to uh, retrofit that and I can open the door from from the inside which is obviously really important for a uh, for a micro camper So welcome back to my channel and finally an update with my van. As you may have seen on my last video, which was probably a few months ago now, um, you will have seen that I've bought this. It's a Peugeot Partner. It's just a short wheelbase van and I bought it for the purposes of, well, doing some aviation photography, some landscape photography uh, to help me with that. And, uh, and also it is my daily use vehicle so this is my my everyday car but what I've done to it is turned a basic shell of a van into a stealthy micro camper so in the last video you will have seen that it was basically an empty shell and I think I at the time of recording it it was basically uh, an empty shell with with uh, a carpet finish on the inside so it was all soundproofed insulated and carpeted and it had a floor and the rest of it was empty so it's all now pretty much uh, finished uh, the furniture's in the bed's in or the sofa sofa bed is in and uh, and all the electrics are done so let me show you in a little bit more detail exactly what I've done Okay, so um, it's important to remember that this is my daily vehicle, so everything is a compromise in this. Um, but having said that, it does the job, as far as I can tell, just about right. I've not actually used it yet for its intended purpose. I mean, I'm driving it around every day, but to actually use it for uh, photography uh, trips, I've not actually done that yet. So it remains to be seen exactly how it performs. But... I guess that's a part of the fun of it. It's um, it's important, I suppose, to live with a van for a little bit, use it a couple of times just to get to know it and uh, to see where its shortcomings are and if it needs anything um, that, uh, that I've not thought about yet. Um, uh, me and the missus did take it to the coast just for a day trip with the dog and um, it was obvious that it needed something um, which was an additional table, which is just here by the front uh, sliding door. So <clears throat> that's uh, that's been added. Um, but uh, I've only just recently got the foam for the for the bed, the sofa seat. Um, so that is yet to be upholstered. So it's just bare foam with stockinette on it at the moment. But um, uh, like I say, it needs to be lived in. It needs to be used. For me to figure out exactly uh, how it performs and um, and what it could do with so let me show you exactly what i've done um, compared to the empty shell that you last saw so the important bit really is the main cupboard so let me spin you around so this is the cupboard now and uh, this is all made out of plywood with DC fix sticky back plastic finishing on it. Um, so from the top, uh, it's just a bit of a storage area, um, which I can put bits and pieces in if I need to, maybe clothes if I'm, if I'm away for the night. Uh, in here is a water tank. So the idea is that I have kind of got running water. So at the moment it's, it's strapped down so it doesn't move when you're driving around. So you can release those, uh, that, that strap to stop it moving. And then obviously it's empty at the moment, but 
when it's got water in it's uh it's it's there like that so you just turn the tap around open the tap and you've got running water uh, so that's a 10 litre 10 litre jerry can effectively so that works well um, and I have actually used that so that does work so I'm happy with that um, next to that is the is the electric system so this is based on a Bluetti um, power station power bank um, and I decided to go down this route for pure simplicity to be honest with you um, because because I'm limited in space and limited in room in here I didn't want to go to the uh, to the lengths of fitting um, a split charge relay system and uh, leisure batteries into this into this van because it would just be using up room so I've gone for gone for the power station instead and to be honest with you I'm not really going to be using an awful lot of power in here um, it's purely to power the lights uh, in the van and um, also charge batteries as and when I need it um, for the camera or video camera whatever I need so so that's the reason I've gone for a power station and the way it works is that spin you around again is that uh, the whole van basically runs on these two power cords here which then go to a fuse box over the back and uh, then to uh, the lighting panel here so they all control different different bits and pieces obviously so to show you um, here you've got uh, got some switches for uh, the reading lights which is there and there um, they've got USB power as well but they can independently be switched off at the uh, at the actual lamp itself uh, the second switch is actually the lighting for the cupboard so we'll come back to that in a second I'll leave that switched on uh, the third switch the middle one are the LED strip lights on the ceiling so they're kind of like the main lighting and they're controlled by uh, this um, remote control here so they can all be changed in color and you can have a disco in here if you want <laughs> um, so that's that's that and the way I've worked that I don't know how reliable these LED lights are so I've built an access panel into the ceiling and that's the little LED receiver um, infrared receiver for the LED lights so if I need to I can get into the ceiling there uh, to be able to change the lights uh, the LED strips if I need to so I've built that kind of flexibility into it uh, the fourth switch is this light here which is kind of a work light so um, what I've done there is I've placed that directly above um, the entrance here so so as I said I went to the coast and I found a bit of a shortcoming I need another table it's quite useful actually because this table pops up and I can put my laptop on there or or my iPad and I can actually sit here and do some video editing or photo editing um, as and when I need uh, on there and likewise if I wanted to I could put my uh, stove on there my gas stove and uh, and actually cook on there so that's actually quite useful um, so so that's the reason for that for that table but the other good thing is that I can actually open the sliding door and I can use that to cook on from the outside as well so it's it's a it's a pretty good little table to have actually so I'm quite pleased with that um, really useful um, so back to the cupboard I said the second light was for the, I'll come back to the fifth switch in a minute but the second button there is for the cupboard light so that is the main storage cupboard in here um, so clothes and boots and camera bags and things like that can go in there but the reason I've built it that way is because the sliding door the timbre door means that you can access the storage cupboard from the inside with the back doors closed but if I'm 
wanting to get something out when I'm outside. I've also got an external door as well. So that means that I can access it easily from the outside when I'm using the big, the main back door or the inside when the doors are closed and it's, and it's chucking it down with rain outside, that kind of thing. So that's, that's the main part of the cabinet. And then at the front here, I've just got a small door. <laughs> Toilet roll, just what you need. A um, few bits and pieces in there. And also my main cooking device is the, is the single ring gas burner, uh, which runs on aerosol, aerosol, aerosol type uh, butane or propane, whatever it is. So that's, uh, that lives in there. Um, and a couple of chopping gourds still in their wrappers. And then some essentials like wipes and toilet roll and spare hooks uh, and a towel in there as well. But obviously this is just, this is just thrown in, in here temporarily until I kind of get to use it and live with it. Um, so that's that. And then uh, on the main bulkhead of the cabinet, I've got, uh, well, also I've got an external AC power supply, which is underneath the back bumper. So I can plug campsite power into that. And that runs uh, 240 volt mains power to this. Got USB chargers on there as well. And if I need to charge the Bluetti from the mains, I can do that with, um, with my um, charging brick as well. Uh, which I do actually keep at home, but I guess if I'm going away for a few days, I can take that with me um, if I'm actually going to a campsite. Uh, carbon monoxide detector. Obviously I'm gonna be cooking in here at some point, um, but if I do cook in here, I'll be using the um, using it with the windows open or the door open, something like that. But that's just a bit of a added uh, peace of mind really. So that's the main the main uh, cabinet. The other thing, one last thing to show you on this is that going outside again, is that if I'm outside and I need another table to work on, I've built this into it. So I've got a slide out table that I can either cook on or work on, put my camera on, anything like that. Um, and that's what, what that is for. Quite useful, I think. Right, so moving on. Um, oh, I should say that the Blue Etty power station itself, uh, it's, that's, that's the output there for the van. I've got two AC outputs as well. So it's got a sine wave AC converter in there, inverter. Um, so I can actually run um, some low powered uh, AC devices as well and they go up to 700 watts so it's a fair amount but it will will drain the battery pretty quickly um just a little speaker there um that's how you charge it um and i've got a cigarette lighter socket extension which goes from the front of the van just down there and the cable is behind me so I can use this cable to charge up the um, the, the Bluetti as I'm driving along if I need to. Uh, so that's that's pretty useful. And then I've got one USB-C and four USB-A sockets there. Uh, USB-C goes up to 100 watts and the USB-A is at three watts. So um, I'm really impressed with this. So I am planning on doing a, a video review of the Bluetti on its own um, when uh, when I when I get around to it. Um, but just to uh, just to let you know, this is an EB55, uh, so it's 537 watt hours, and it's rated to 700 watts. Um, and I got that on the Black Friday sale last year, um, <laughs> almost as soon as I got the van, before I'd even started building anything. And I think I paid about uh, 400 pounds for it. I think. So I think it's I think it usually retails about 500. So I, I got a good deal on it at um, in the Black Friday sale last year. 
So that's the cabinet done. Um, and the storage. Uh, let me just scoot along a bit and I'll just show you the inside of the door again. I think you may have seen that last time, but I'll just quickly, quickly go over that again. So, um, I've just built in some storage pockets for on the actual wooden panel that sits in the door there. So I've just kind of got my high-vis hand warmers and some waterproof socks at the moment. But like I said, I'm going to live with it and see what I actually want to put there. Um, now, the other thing is when you buy a, uh, a Peugeot Partner van, uh, which is the same as a Vauxhall Combo or a Toyota Pro A City uh, or a Citroen Berlingo, uh, if you buy the actual van, you can't open the door from the inside. Now, I did mention this briefly on my on my last video. So what I managed to do was source the parts, the, the door lock, um, with an internal cable release for the door lock um, for the passenger equivalent. So I've now been able to uh, retrofit that and I can open the door from from the inside, which is obviously really important for a uh, for a micro camper otherwise it would be pretty difficult to use it to be honest with you so that was a bit of a it could have been a deal breaker but um but once i figured that out it um it's it's really made a, the world a difference so next job is to show you this bit here so i've got some additional storage um so at the moment i've got some foam on these uh, on these on this seat where I, the seating area where i'm sat so i'm just going to move that out of the way for a minute just to make life a bit easier to show you so down here i've built an additional storage box so it's kind of angled at the back to make the most of the the room behind the seat and it's got vertical sides at the front and it's just basically a lift up box and I've got camping chairs, blankets, boots, and all that kind of stuff in in there. It's all um, uh, the hinge is a piano hinge, goes all the way along, and it's pretty secure. And it's and it's it's a, a good bit of storage space to 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 chuck stuff in when you uh, when you need to need to get rid of stuff and big stuff like camping chairs. That's um, it's a it's a good place to put that. Um, it does restrict the the entrance space a little bit, but like I said, it's a compromise um, and uh, and there's not an awful lot of room in here. So, so it does need to um, be the size it is and it's just useful to put stuff in. Uh, on the lid is um, a couple of screw mounts. So let me show you uh, that there. There's a couple of screw mounts here with um are actually captive nuts inside so the idea of that is that i can unscrew those those uh, bolts and i've got this so this is from mtbvans.co.uk so if you're into cycling I've got this device here that that will bolt into there and like that and that will actually hold the bike down the center of the van uh, on its forks by using, you can, you can kind of mount the, mount the bike through its forks by using, by, by using this device. So that will work on my road bike and my mountain bike using different bits and pieces that it comes with. So that, I keep that in the van and, uh, and that's, the, that's the purpose of, of those, uh, those mounting holes there, those mounting bolts. So I'll just leave that there for a the minute. Um, so this, this, I call this kind of like a storage locker. So I've got a bit of foam that then sits on that. So if I want to, with the door sliding door open, if I want to perch on there and kind of just be ready to jump out to take photos of aircraft or anything like that, then then I can kind of use this bit here to put cameras on or whatever, or the table, and I can just, I can perch there. It's, it's a bit of a smaller seat, but it's, um, I thought it would be worth putting some foam on that. Besides the point, once the bed is out, once you're using the bed, you kind of need that as the, 
as an extension. You need that for the length of the bed. So, so that's that. Um, just while you're here, I'll just show you that. So this is the um, this is the one of the reading lights. Um, so uh, they're on kind of gooseneck, flexible things with a switch on there. So you can turn those on and off. Got a couple of storage nets on the wall here. Um, and on this side, I've got, um, can you see that? Wait a minute, bear with me. So on this side, I've got another storage pocket, which is kind of built into the, into the side of the van. So I've just got charging cables in there at the moment and not much else. Um, and then down here, uh, I've got, let me spin you around, make life easier. Down here on the sidewall, there's a um, couple of charging points there. So I've got a couple of more USB-Cs, one USB-A and another cigarette lighter socket, whatever I'll use that for. And that just keeps a, a check on how much power is in the Bluetti. It's not really useful to be honest because you just look at the Bluetti. But that's, that's there built into the sidewall, which is quite useful especially for like charging your phone at night or so, something like that, you know. Um, and then, let me go over this side. There's not a lot of room in here, so you have to bear with me. So, um, this is the foam that I've got. Um, I got this from GB Foam. Um, this is the luxury hard foam 39h i think it is um and it's 10 centimeters thick so i think it's 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 good enough for well it's, it's very good for what i'm going to use it for there's three pieces so there's one here which i just showed you a minute ago and then this bit on the main bench area and i do have another bit which will fill in this gap now the reason for that is to, to go on the slide out bed, which I'll show you very shortly. So looking at the top, that's the kind of like the bed, uh, the bench seat area. Now the way this works is pretty clever, I think. Um, I can't take credit for it because I got this from, um, I got this idea from uh, Mel on, um, small van big world big world small van whatever it's called i can't remember but i'll put a link to it up here um and he did a video with a a bigger van and a much bigger bed like a double mattress and and this system looked really good to me and i thought i'm going to try and utilize that in this van um just because it works with the space uh, or the limited space that I've got. So let me get out of the way here and I'll try and show you exactly what I've got. So down here is is kind of like the structure of it. So I've got uh, three cubby holes, one there, one there, and one at the end. And in between the three cubby holes, I've got two drawers. So I'll show you the storage part first. So you literally just slide them out. They're kind of on low friction feet and they just slide on the floor. There's no drawer runners or anything like that, but they just, they literally just slide out. So I've got cookware in there and coffee and towel, tea towels and bits and pieces like that. And they just secure into place like a normal camper van lock. So once they're locked, they can't slide out when you're driving around. And then likewise on this one, I've just got more, more storage, more, more cookware, um, jet boils, saucepans, things like that, knives and forks. So, so that's kind of, that's the storage side of it. But the really good thing that I got from, from Mel on that channel is that if you pull these out, well, first of all, I've got a couple of clips, which I will just undo. So I'm just going to slide the drawers out like that. 
and they come out a fair way. And then and now the bed slides out and rests on those drawers. So if you can see that, that's how it that's how it looks now. So now when you put the put the foam down and that other bit of foam which I've got which goes on there you've now got a full bed that goes from from here all the way across to here so it's it's quite quite comfy for a for a single um, if two of you try and sleep in there then um, I hope you like each other that's all I can say because it's gonna be a bit of a tight tight squeeze but um, so for that reason the the other bit of foam I'm just going to probably bring with me when I need it. Um, it's not going to live in the van properly uh, because obviously limited space. I, I could put it up on the back as, as kind of like a, a backrest, but I'm not sure I'm going to need it and it might just get in the way. So like I said, got to live with it, see if I actually do need it or not. So that is the, the way the bed works. Um, and I think it's, I think it's a really good, really good design. But like I say, I can't take credit for it. Just a couple of other things to show you. Um, got a coat hanger here, um, another storage pocket here, and I've got a couple of floodlights on the back. So there's one there and one there and they both work on this switch. So when you switch those on, the lights come on. And the idea of that is that the whole of the back of the van and the floor area around here gets floodlit with, some, uh, with these LED lights. So it means that if you're gonna do anything out here when it's dark or when you get your bag out of the van or w whatever, um, it's, uh, you've got a, a good amount of lighting here. And, uh, and once again, they're powered by the Bluetti and again i've got something very similar on the front door and that happens on the fifth switch which i mentioned earlier and then i've got another led floodlight just here which is just up here so although it's inside it kind of it comes out it, it, it floodlights the the um the area down here so you've kind of got an, an entrance light as well um all from the nearest switch here um, i'll just show you this table again because it was a bit cramped in there um, so that's how it is, that's the entrance. So it is not a lot of room to get in, but again, it does the job. And then this table, you just lift it up and it locks into place. So it means that if I want to do any cooking while I'm, while I'm standing outside and it's a nice, nice day like this and I wanna use the gas burner, I can put it on here and I can cook outside. Um, and that works really well, I think. Um, like I said before, when I was at the coast, I warmed up a chili uh, on this table and it was a little bit breezy, so you weren't very well protected. So if it, and again, if it starts raining, to use that table would be pretty good. Um, so that's the idea behind that. Uh, another thing to show you is that I have a cigarette lighter fridge. Um, which well, it's basically a, a cool box. It's, it's just a small one. Um, but the idea is that when I'm on my own or, or rather when, when me and the missus are out for the day, it can live just here, um, which is a, a good spot for it because it doesn't move around too much. But then when I'm on my own, I've also got the ability to, to let this seat down like this and I've got a, um, a flat storage area there so my next job is to make some kind of platform here which um, which I can actually secure the the cool box to so that will actually live on the front seat as it's folded down there and um, it frees up this space here so 
So that's the plan for that. Now, another thing that I've, um, I've not done with this van is built in a, a fan. It's got, hasn't got a max fan or anything like that for ventilation. Um, and it doesn't have a damp proof membrane. But what I've done instead is I've, one of the things that I'm going to add is, is a little low powered fan, um, which will kind of circulate the air a little bit. And I've added these on as well. Now I've never had these before um, on any of my cars, but I've put them onto this. They are kind of wind deflectors. I don't know the proper name for them, um, but I can't believe I've not had them before. These are fantastic. I mean, just when you, you can drive along the motorway with the windows open, um, not all the way, obviously, but I mean, you, the, the amount of ventilation you get and you don't get any buffeting, it's fantastic. Um, and that's just a bonus, you know, driving along with, with your windows open, which makes a nice change. But the idea of having these is that when I'm sleeping in there, I can switch the little fan on and I can crack the windows open both, both sides uh, by what, inch and a half, two inches, something like that. And, uh, and I've got ventilation that way. And likewise, I can do that when I'm cooking. So, so that's the idea behind that. Um, but yeah, these are these are brilliant. I can't believe I've I've not had these before. A um, couple of other things. So, just to show you very quickly, I bought the van like this, ready-made. Uh, so the um, they already upgraded the wheels, so it's got 18-inch uh, alloys now instead of 17 or 16, I can't remember what it should have been. Um, that's who I bought the van from. And they put in the side rails as well. And uh, the spoiler. So the boot has a spoiler. Oh, can't really call it a boot, can you? The tailgate has a slight uh, a spoiler. And the only thing that I've done on top of that on the outside is to add these roof rails but I bought this as a complete kit so it does actually have cross pieces as well uh, so if I ever needed to add a roof box for whatever reason I can do that as well so I think I'm just about there I think there's not an awful lot else to do um, like I say, the only things that really spring to mind are getting these cushions upholstered. Um, so I'll, I'll be doing that in the, uh, probably over the next few months, but I'll live with these as they are at the moment. Um, and I'll probably get some kind of curtain here as well, so I can kind of close off the front. So if I am sleeping in the back, I've got privacy and no one can really see me in the back. Um, uh, and that's it really. So there you go. That's a tour of the van. Um, if I do any upgrades to it, I'll let you know over the course of the, uh, of the videos on the channel as we, uh, as we go on. But, um, that's it as far as I'm concerned for now. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any upgrades for a while to come yet, apart from maybe the table in the front and the curtain, like I, I mentioned. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you found that useful. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you found this video useful. All right, take care, see you next time. Bye for now.